to it now. This is cool. I've um, been running around the show as usual, but uh, I'm very grateful to uh, land in all my favorite spots. And uh, the other night, I had the privilege of kind of helping to introduce this amazing uh, instrument. Very excited about it. You know, I'm a big uh, Korg user in Dream Theater for the last many years. I've been using uh, the Korg Oasis, and I've been waiting like for the next level of magic that Korg would produce. And uh, one day, not all that long ago, I think Jack told me, hey, you're going to be very happy. There's something else happening. So, um, and indeed, I am very happy. This thing is just uh, a beautiful monster, if you will. It's, it's a beast. And uh, one of the great things about Korg instruments is that I can really rely on them on the road. I do a lot of traveling, a lot of playing all around the world. And uh, I can walk into the gig and know it's going to work, which is really, really important in a keyboard. So uh, why don't I play a sound for you? I put together a few sounds. I hadn't had much time with this instrument, but uh, because it's very inspirational, I managed to capture a few things that kind of were very cool. And uh, let's see if I can find them. So this is, uh, I'm going to cycle through some um, combinations and uh, just show you kind of what's the magic that you can find into a patch. So all the first thing I'm going to do is part of one combination. So, um, and that leads me to point out something very, very important about chord keyboards. You know, I'm an improviser. Like that piece I just played, uh, uh, we'll never hear it again. Well, we might hear it again, because a lot of you are running cameras. But I just made it up on the spot. And I had no idea what key I was going to play in. And no, I didn't even remember what that sound was going to sound like, to tell you the truth. 
Jack would remember what it sounds like, but I don't do, you know, that's his specialty. Anyway, so I put my hand on the keys, I hear the sound, I go, oh, okay, that vibe. And my fingers go, and I just start to, you know, improvise and create. And that's a very important thing for a musician to get from an instrument. You know, I can think back about some of the, well, maybe the best albums that I've created with my group and solo, and a lot of the times the tunes all get sparked by one of the instruments in my room. And when I think back of, of the different albums that I've created, I can think specifically to points where I can say, you know what? Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence with Dream Theater was inspired by the chord Karma. It's just reality. I know it sounds like ridiculous, but what happened with that album was I had just gotten a chord Karma and put it in the studio and uh, kind of arrived there. We were just getting started working and uh, John Petrucci said, oh, you know, well, let's just come up with some themes and stuff and uh, just kind of get some ideas about the motifs we want to use. Why don't you go and, you know, just play some keyboard stuff and Let's record it and see what's happening. So he was at, I was with my karma. I only had it for like a couple of days. And he said, play me like the saddest thing you could ever, the saddest melody you could think of. I went, da -da -da -da, okay. Uh, maybe called up a patch called like sad strings. Put my hand down and went, ah. I felt, felt the love. Just started to play. I was inspired. Came up with the first melody. Okay, now we need something really big and really glorious. And, you know, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, how about this sound? I came up with, you know, big orchestra, and I played it, and I went, whoa, that's it. And it totally inspired me for the next. The reality of the situation was in probably about a half an hour, we had all the themes written just by, you know, John kind of saying to me, oh, come up with the saddest. Come up with something happy. Come up with this. And I would go, da -da 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 -da, play this, play that. Okay, got it. I got it. Got it. Okay, done. And then we set out to, you know, kind of develop all the ideas. But the instrument can play a major role in the inspiration for musician. And that is why I keep on coming back to Korg, and that's why I use Korg instruments, because there is a major inspiration factor. There's a lot of time spent on creating these incredible sounds. So I think I'll play a couple more. Yeah, so one of the things I want to point out as I'm playing the sound, I'm kind of remembering. One of the great things about the Kronos is it's got all these different kinds of synthesis built in, all these different synthesis engines. And for all the details, I'll probably leave it to my friends who work here to get into that. Years ago, I could have gotten into that stuff. Many, many years ago, I was a Korg product specialist and uh, kind of... Well, it was a funny time because I was just coming out of like learning the mini Moog and I could turn all the knobs and I knew what all the sounds were, but I knew I didn't know anything about the technical part of it. But then this job came up to work at Korg and I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. My wife said, you got to go work, you know, you got to make a living. And I was like, really? But I'm a musician. But anyway, so, uh, you know, it's kind of all foreign. But uh, at any rate, when I started to work at Korg and we're talking, I don't know, should I even say how many years ago this was? I don't know. Like, more than 20 years ago. Um, I started to put the pieces together. I almost had to because, you know, digital synthesizers were coming out and it wasn't so possible to just take a knob and turn it and make a sound. You had to know what was going on. So I uh, started to kind of like understand what all the, what a cutoff filter was and a low frequency oscillator and source and destination and all this kind of stuff. 
So, um, you know, those are the days when it was all coming together. But anyway, so this instrument brings a lot of different kinds of synthesis together. And maybe some of you in the room are thinking, you know what? There's all these, you know, I, I have my computer, I've got all these hard drives, I've got all the gigabytes, I've got these libraries, I've got all this stuff, and you're probably completely confused, and you don't know where to find the sounds that you want, or maybe you do, but the reason that I think that the Kronos is something that everybody needs to pay real attention to, especially if you're a gigging musician, is that for me, to come to a home like this, Korg, where you've got all these amazing musical and technical minds that can bring together a powerful concept like this, to put all the different kinds of synthesis into one instrument and make, and not only that, but make the amazing sounds, like my friend Jack, who's been making the you know, world-class sounds on Korg instruments for so many years. I mean, this is the reason to get a Korg instrument, because they're saying, okay, we can make you an instrument. You know, an instrument is a really personal thing for a musician. You wanna, you wanna feel the love. So, and you're not gonna get that from a computer with a bunch of hard drives and a library over here and a library over there and this and that. You might get some good sounds that you'll love, but it's really important, uh, definitely to me, to have an instrument that uh, I can feel, uh, you know, at one with, so. This is fun stuff. That you can come up here and play one patch and have this kind of party. This is awesome. And of course, um, I'll, I'll play two more that I that I kind of found. And you know, I'll say very briefly. I had this machine for two days at home, right? That's the only time I really ever got to play with it before, like today. Oh, before the other day when I introduced it. But uh, and I was really, really sick, unfortunately, which I'm feeling a bit better now. So I kind of like came up to it in a total like fever fog, but it uplifted me enough to go, okay, well this thing sounds amazing. I can save this patch, make a note of this one, and inspirational enough to, to make me feel a whole lot better. So um, let's see, a couple, a couple of more little things. I love this one. Is this the musical fox, your uh, creation? Not mine, Steven did this one. Ah, Steven did this one. Thank you, Steven.
I'll play one more. Um, yeah, that's all one combination. It's pretty pretty awesome. And actually, just hitting the karma button. You know, karma is this whole like world of magic that's somewhere inside this thing. If you open up the hood, find little Merlins in there, like waving magic wands. Probably what you would see. But um, yeah, but because it's cool because you're playing this like guitar thing. And hit the button and the whole thing changes to this lovely uh, trippy Genesis world. So um, yeah, so I'll play one more. This is a pretty a large sound. Let's see. Cool. Thank you all for stopping by. Please stick around and ask everybody questions about the Kronos. It's definitely something you want to know all about because it's spectacular. And thanks to all my Korg friends for making such an amazing instrument. I'm very proud to be here. Okay. See all of you. <laughs>